Good morning and praise the Lord. Thanking God for allowing us to make it into the year 2023. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for your grace. Thank you, God, for your love. Thank you, God, for allowing us, God, to come to the table and put the biblical foundations first, God, and eat from the good word that you have before us. We thank you, oh God, for it falling on good ground. And we thank you for it not just falling on good ground for us, but for us to continue and disciple for you, oh God. Lord, remembering what you have done for us, God. Remembering where you have brought us out of, oh God. And going out and speaking Spread in the word, oh God, your glorious gospel to others, Lord, so that you may be glorified in our lives, God, first and in the earth as we glorify you. We praise your name. We bless you, oh God. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so today's lesson is beginning a new series, and this series is Choosing Wisdom. Choosing Wisdom. We have a choice, and the choice is wisdom. Choose wisdom. And with that, the overview I like to read for the series is um, Choosing Wisdom this series will lead us on a trip through highlighted portions of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. Um, we will look at wisdom's work, which is today's lesson, wisdom's works, and the truth that wisdom waits, and then hear wisdom's warning. The scripture passages that we will be studying these next few weeks will help us to better understand the importance of choosing wisdoms. Brothers, sisters, friends, family, saints, everybody, we have a choice. And my prayer is that we choose wisdom, that we make the right choice, that we choose wisdom. Wisdom is not elusive or impossible to attain. attain. God has made wisdom attainable. We can choose wisdom. We can obtain it if, if, that's the clause, if we seek wisdom by seeking God who gives wisdom, we will gain what we need to please the Lord and walk in his commandments. So we have to seek wisdom by seeking God. That's how we get wisdom. That's how we choose wisdom, choosing to seek God. And um, he said, he'll give it unbraided. Ask and you shall receive. Wisdom is available to us. Okay, so today's lesson is wisdom's work. Wisdom has a word and how precious <laughs> is wisdom and its worth. We're going to find out about how precious wisdom's worth is and Proverbs. So the lesson text is Proverbs chapter three, verses five through 26. And then first Corinthians chapter one, verses 24 through 30. I'm going to begin by reading Proverbs 3, 5 through 26. How? How do we get wisdom, you ask? It's by seeking God. How do we seek God? We got to get in his word, y'all. We got to turn stuff to the side, put flesh under subjection, and get in God's word. It's getting his word, like eat the word. Y'all know I love food. <laughs> But my God, there is nothing like the word of God in eating at the table that he spreads before us. The word of God, starting in Proverbs chapter three. And it reads, when I get to it, 
All right, I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Trust, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Lean not to your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, your mind, your body, your soul, your strength. Trust in the Lord. Wisdom. When people are saying one thing, line it up with the word. Trust in the Lord. When you're feeling one thing, feelings are not facts. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will, God's will, in all you do. And he will show you the path to take. A lot of times it's not the popular path. A lot of times it's not the path that even makes sense because God's thoughts are not our thoughts and his ways are not our ways. But trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek God's will. God, your will be done. Your kingdom come, your will be done in all that we do. And God will show us the path to take. There's peace when you go in the path of the Lord, when you aren't resisting God, you feel a peace. It, he makes those ways straight. There's peace. There's when you don't resist God and you go in the path that he is leading you to take. Verse seven, this is wisdom, y'all. Don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Instead, fear reverence the Lord and turn away from evil. Don't be impressed with your own knowledge, with worldly knowledge. Look to God, fear God, reverence God. If it doesn't make sense, go to God and he will lead you. Then you will have healing of your body and strength for your bones when you are not impressed by your own wisdom and when you reverence the lord you will have healing for your body and strength for your bones honor the lord with your wealth and with the best parts of everything you produce honor god that's wisdom it's all his anyway. So you might as well give God what he deserves. The first of your day, the first of your finances, the first. Give it to God. Honor him. Don't wait till you just have a little bit left. It says, honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce. Don't just give him anything. Give him the best part. Give it to him, y'all. The best part. Then it's a promise. There's a clause, but it's a promise. And his promises are yes and amen. God is so faithful. Then he will fill your barns with grain. If you honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce, then he will fill your barns with grain. And your vats will overflow with good wine. <laughs> My child, don't reject the Lord's discipline. Don't reject when God corrects us. It does not feel good. <laughs> it don't. I'm laughing because I've been corrected. Jesus, I've been corrected and it doesn't feel good um, at the time. And Flesh and pride wants to show itself and puff up, but it takes humility to have wisdom. And in humility, we have to allow God to correct us. We have to receive the chastising and correcting of the Lord. In humility, God, I don't have it all together. I won't lean to my own understanding. I won't lean to my own wisdom. But God, I'll trust you and I thank you because God, chase 
and corrects those he loves. I thank you, God, for loving me. Put that in the comments. Thank you, God, for loving me. Thank you, God, for correcting me. Thank you, God, for chasing me. So verse 11, do not reject the Lord's discipline and don't be upset when he corrects you for the Lord corrects those he loves. Just as a, as a father corrects a child in whom he delights. Yeah, he delights in us. <laughs> and because he delights in us, he corrects us. Put that in the chat. He delights in me. See him delighting in you. See him smiling on you. And sometimes in him smiling on you, he corrects you. He whoops you. He, 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 he turn that around. That's not right. And in humility, let's receive the correction of the Lord. Verse 11, for joyful is the person who finds wisdom, the one who gains understanding. For wisdom is worth, is more profitable than silver, and her wages are better than gold. Wisdom, how precious. Wisdom is more precious than rubies more precious and think this is in the time this is over two thousand years ago so they didn't have like the things that we relate to um well in today's time we like oh wisdom is more precious than a tesla or um a billion dollar house like wisdom is far more precious than any of that. Wisdom is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire, nothing, absolutely nothing that you desire. Think of everything you desire. Oh, it'd be nice to have this. I wish I had that. Oh, I'd be so good if I had this and that. Um, You will be good if you desire wisdom. Nothing you desire compares to her. And that her is wisdom. Nothing you desire compares to her. She, wisdom, offers you long life in the right hand. Long life. That's more precious than anything. Long life in her right hand and riches and honor in the left. She will guide you down delightful paths. Sounds like peace to me. And her ways are satisfying. Think about how satisfying. We just had that really cold front. How satisfying a cup of tea was. With all that cold weather in the fireplace was. And the warm footies. And the blankets. You know, it's, it, it warmed us on the outside and the tea on the inside. But how satisfying. It is to have wisdom. Wisdom is a tree of life to those who embrace her. Let us embrace wisdom. Put it in the chat. Let's be interactive. Yep, it's recorded, but we still can be interactive. Let us embrace wisdom. Happy are those who hold tight to wisdom, not our own understanding, not our own knowledge, not our book knowledge, but to the wisdom of God. Happy are those who hold tight to her. By wisdom, the Lord founded the earth. By understanding, he created the heavens. By his knowledge, the deep foundations of the earth burst forth. And the dew settles beneath the night sky. My child, do not lose sight of common sense and discernment. Hang on to them, for they will refresh our souls. They are like jewels of necklace. Jewels on a necklace. They keep you safe on your way. And your feet will not stumble. Hang on. Hold tightly to wisdom because your feet will not stumble. Hold tightly. Be okay with being rebuked and corrected by God. Hold tightly to that. 
because it'll prevent our feet from stumbling. And then it says, you can go to bed without fear. We can lay down and sleep soundly. We do not need to be afraid of sudden disaster or the destruction that comes upon the wicked. For the Lord, the Lord is your security. Put it in the chat. The Lord is your, the Lord is my security. Tell me how has God been security? How was God security for you in 2022? God was a shield and a buckler for me around my mind. Listen, that's where the enemy fights. So that's where God protected. And that's where God showed me, I will be your defense. I will be your shield. He told me, put on the helmet of salvation. And then wear my breastplate of righteousness. He is my defense. God fights for me and he fights for you. How did God show you in 2022 that he was your defense? Share it in the comments. Encourage a brother, a sister, a friend, a saint. How did God show you that he was your defense? This is wisdom's work, y'all. This is wisdom's work. So Proverbs, we know, or maybe you don't, that Solomon wrote, um, wrote the book of Proverbs and Solomon was David's son. Um, David named King Solomon and King Solomon, when he was asked by God, what do you want? It was an angel that came and he said, God said, whatever you want, I'll give it to you. And the young king did not ask for honor, riches, or long life. He recognized that he, as a king, he had a daunting task ahead of him. So he asked for wisdom. I think that was wise all by yourself, that he asked for wisdom. Because in him getting wisdom, he received honor, riches, Okay, maybe not long life. <laughs> I'm not laughing that he didn't get long life. I'm laughing because how easy, it's like a, ah, laugh. How easy it is for us to start off on the right track and end up in the wrong place. So Solomon was humble. He was first, He was king and he was like, God, I need wisdom. I can have anything I need wisdom. I want wisdom and humility. He asked for wisdom. But as he continued on, Solomon found himself not in such a good place. He married women that God told him, don't marry. The book of Moses, don't marry these women. But he married them. He didn't hold on. He didn't cling to the wisdom. I urge you, brothers, sisters, so. Hold on, cling to the wisdom, not my knowledge, not your knowledge, not your understanding, but lean on God, lean on his word, lean to his wisdom, trust God. So later on, wisdom requires humility. I believe Solomon got puffed up in this honor, riches, fame, him getting all this stuff. He was no longer humble. And so wisdom became theory without proper application for Solomon. And as an older man, Solomon needed the humility he had possessed as a younger man to continue walking all the wisdom God had gave him. But he didn't do it. And he paid for that. And we learn about it today to, for application. For us to remember, it's easy to start on the wrong, on the right track, but we must continue. We must continue in wisdom. We must continue in holding on to and clinging to the word of God. We must continue in that hold on to it, cling to wisdom, cling to God, trust in the Lord 
with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So how do we apply that to us? We look to God instead of ourselves. Look to God. God has granted us the ability to approach situa situations logically. We must have the humility to avoid leaning to our own understanding. It may make sense in the natural realm, but in the spiritual realm, God could be saying no. And it doesn't make sense. But later down the road, we find out, oh, that's why God didn't want me to do that. Don't lean to your own understanding. Have humility to obtain and keep wisdom. Have humility and look to God instead of ourselves. Remember, it takes discipline to be a disciple. I like um, in the lesson context, it says, if we are willing to receive these blessings, the work that wisdom gives, we must also be willing to receive correction from the Lord. It is one thing to humble ourselves to be wise, but it's quite another to accept the um, chastising of the Lord and admit when we have done wrong. The flesh, no good dwells in it. And pride, y'all, just being honest, pride like I wasn't wrong, no. But humility say, okay, search me, God. Search my heart. And if you find anything in it that's not like you got, correct me. Because I want to be right. I want to be saved. I want to be whole. I, when you call, when Jesus come back and that trumpet sound, and I have to stand face to face before you, God, I want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. God, don't allow pride to stop me from lining up right before you. That's wisdom. That's wisdom. The focus verse comes from 1 Corinthians 1 and 24. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 1, 24 through 30. 1 Corinthians 1, 24 through 30. But those, but to those called by God to salvation, both Jews and Gentiles, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. The foolish plan of God, the foolish plan of God is wiser than the wisest of human plans. I'll read it again. This foolish plan of God is wiser than the wisest of human plans and God's weakness is stronger than the greatest of human strength great and mighty is our God remember dear brothers and sisters that few of you were wise in the world's eyes or powerful or wealthy few of us was when God called us, I know I wasn't, I was discarded. Did pe people didn't want nothing to do with me. Instead, God chose those things the world consider foolish in order to shame those who think they are wise. And he chose those things that are powerless to shame 
those who are powerful. God chose things despised by the world, things counted as nothing at all, and used them to bring to nothing what the world considers important. <laughs> I love it because God took nothing and made it something. And it's no goodness of our own. It's the grace of God. His grace is abounding in our lives. His grace is sufficient. Oh, sweet God, sweet God. As a result, verse 29, no one can ever boast in the presence of God. We cannot boast because it's no goodness of our own. It's all God. He gets the glory. He gets the praise. He gets the honor. It's due to him. Because without him, we are nothing. Nothing. God has united us with Christ Jesus. For our benefit, God made him to be wisdom itself. Christ made us right with God. He made us pure and holy. And he freed us from sin. So what it is saying is, the Jews can't boast like, oh, we have Abraham's descendants. The Gentiles can't boast because it's grace. God did it. God did it. We thank him for doing it. So the truth about God, godly wisdom is the most valuable asset we could ever obtain. Godly wisdom. Let's thank God. Let's put that in the cup. Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to receive, to humbly receive, obtain, and keep godly wisdom. Thank you for allowing me to humbly receive, obtain, and keep godly wisdom. So how do we do that? We have to deepen our relationship with Jesus Christ. He is our source of wisdom. We are only going to get to it by prayer, by fasting, by getting in the word of God. We got to eat y'all, eat the word, eat the word, meditate on it day and night. Think about it, ponder on it. Go down the rabbit hole of the word <laughs> instead of the rabbit holes of heroes of fear and uncertainty and those different things. Go down the rabbit hole of the word. Ooh, God's love. Wisdom in the Proverbs. Embrace humility. We know what happens with pride. It comes right before the fall. And I refuse to let pride take me out. We've come too far by the grace of God to let pride take us out. So let us embrace wisdom with humility because wisdom has a reward. Much are the rewards of wisdom. And we read it in Proverbs 3, sorry, 1, 3 through 24. 26. And there's so much more. Keep reading. Eat. Eat the word. Eat the wisdom. Write to um, God. Journal. Ponder on it. Rest in it. That's where our wisdom is going to come from. Let us pursue godly wisdom. Those who follow the path of the wise will have a greater chance of leading happier, healthier lives. Such rewards are natural byproducts of wisdom. Wisdom also has the benefit of bringing peace. Pursuing peace and protecting it by using the wisdom of God. What wise steps can you take to create more peace in your life? What wise steps will you take this day forward to create peace in your life? 
And remember, true wisdom is only found in Jesus Christ. True wisdom. And we won't know him unless we eat. We got to eat that word, hunger and thirst after righteousness. They who hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Satisfy us, God. Satisfy us, God. Saturate us, God. Satisfy us, oh God. Lord, allow your word to fall on good ground. Nourish us, oh God. Quench our thirst, God. Let us run to you, oh God. Let us look to you, oh God. The author and the finisher of our faith, our stories, the one who knows us better than we know ourselves. The one who knows the plan that you have for us, oh God. Lord, let us get to know you more. Your character, God. Your voice, oh God. So that we may discern you, oh God. And discern. When the enemy comes disguised as the angel of light, may we discern that that is not my shepherd and we will not heed to the voice. Give us wisdom, oh God. We thank you for wisdom. I'm braided. We thank you for wisdom, oh God. This day forward, wisdom, God, in our ministries, wisdom, God, in our homes, wisdom, God, in our finances, wisdom, God, in our gifts, wisdom, God. We thank you for wisdom are from on high, oh God, like never before. Wisdom like never before. We thank you, oh God, for coming into these vessels like never before, oh God. Lord, for filling us up from the top of our head to the soles of our feet of you, oh God. We thank you for doing it, oh God, to where we are filled with you and nothing, room for nothing else but you, oh God. And may the overflow flow into our jobs. May the overflow flow into our neighborhoods. May the overflow flow into strangers, oh God, that we may do what you have called us to do. And we thank you for doing it. We thank you for the prayer being answered. We say it is so in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We thank you for tuning in today. You are able to sow a seed and you can do that through the church app and the giving. You can do it through cash app, dollar sign, CTC, Bloom. And you can also do it through PayPal, www.mychristtemple.net. Thank you for tuning in. Um, this message or Biblical Foundation's first lesson was brought to you by Christ Temple Church, Bloomington, where Suffolk Bishop Melvin L. Campbell is our pastor. And um, we have service today at 1130, bringing the new year the right way. Let's come into the temple and worship God in one place on one accord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.